As the rich have got richer, much, much richer, the poor have got poorer. Welcome back. You're on The Money with me, Liam Halligan. Today, it is all about interest rates after the Bank of England decided this lunchtime to raise rates for the first time in more than three years. They went up from 0.1% to 0.25%. This comes after inflation in the UK soared to a 10-year high of 5.1% in November. We had that news only yesterday. So I wanted to bring in a few of your emails. Many of you have been contacting us on this important topic. John says... The, real, the reason interest rates rose so much in the 80s is because, like our politicians, they held down rates for years. By keeping rates low, the bubble will burst, and boy, does it hurt if you have a mortgage. Many of my friends lost their homes. Some of my friends, too. Jake says, too little, too late. The interest rate should have gone up to 0.5% then over the next year to at least... 2.5%. I suspect Jake has got some money in a savings account, but I'm not making any inferences. Mike says, inflation will continue to rise in 2022, probably over 8%. The Bank of England rise to 0.25% is nothing. They will have to move to 2% soon, says Mike. Still all-time lows, but many in their 20s and 30s are used to borrowing low borrowing rates, and many may struggle. Thanks for all your emails, some very interesting views here. And talking of interesting views, we still have in the studio Vicky Price, Chief Economic Advisor at the Centre for Economic and Business Research, friend of the show, and another friend of the show, Jasmine Bertels of moneymagpie.com. We're also joined now by Richard Lane, Director of External Affairs at the Debt Charity, Step Change, and by Nick Mendes, Mortgage Technical Manager at John Charcoal. Let's go to you first, Nick, if I may. Jasmine Bertels was saying earlier on, when interest rates go down, mortgage companies don't always move quickly. Banks certainly move quickly to lower savings rates. When interest rates go up, it's the other way around. The banks don't move quickly, but the mortgage companies do. What's been the response to what is a surprise increase in interest rates, according to lots of people in the market? Absolutely. I think, Liam, that's from what we've seen anyway, if we take into account what happened last month anyway, we saw a lot of the banks start to increase rates, preempting a rate rise. This time around is completely different. No lender has actually increased rates. They're still virtually the same as it was to last week. And it'll be interesting to see what actually happens this afternoon. Will lenders follow suit? Who knows? But at the moment, no lender actually increased rates in preparation, which was, I think, it caught everyone off guard. No one expected this to happen. Um, I think, we've, which we already alluded to, in terms of rate rises, I think there's going to be an impact come spring, maybe 0.5 and closer to 1%, which Bank of England mentioned in the report last month. But at the moment, no rates has, has, has actually increased. Very interesting. Richard, let's go to you. Uh, Step Change is an important debt charity. I'm thinking today not just about um, interest rates going up, for savers, and obviously we have many savers watching uh, on the money today, but I'm also thinking of people who are in debt, particularly people who are in debt at the more vulnerable end of the income spectrum. To what extent do you think a rise in interest rates, and I think everyone th feels that this is the first in an, a series of interest rate rises that's going to happen over the months and years to come, how do they impact people who get in contact with step change? I mean, of course, there's never a perfect time to raise interest rates, is there? But we know from our clients that they are expecting now a bit of a double whammy as we head into winter and head towards Christmas, because firstly, they're seeing an enormous rise in their utility bills, in their energy bills, in the price of food. And now they're going to be seeing potentially the cost of their borrowing start to go up. In terms of clients who come to us, actually, Overwhelmingly, they rent their own homes, so they're not going to be worried about their mortgage. Uh, and they're also having to turn to high cost credit already, where they're already seeing huge interest rates on the borrowing that they have. So this is only going to potentially compound that problem for many households. This is definitely a problem, isn't it, Jasmine? As interest rates go up, it's a tiny interest rate rise, but it is the change in the cycle. There will be more rises to come. Mainstream lending prices go up, mainstream lenders perhaps become a bit more picky, more people are pushed mm -hmm. into the arms of so-called twilight lending industry, yeah. doorstep lending industry, mm -hmm. 
legal, some of it semi-legal, mm -hmm. that's when the vulnerable really get hit, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's vulnerable and it's also the middle because uh, about 2.2 million people are on mortgages that track the, the base rate. So that's the number of people are going to have, find their in, their costs increase. But yes, it's, it is, again, it is the vulnerable. It's those who have to drive a car who are already seeing their prices going up, heating, eating. It's the basics of life. Those are the, the things that are going up, so they need to be brought down. But at the same time, as you say, um, if, if that affects um, borrowing pri prices, then that's going to be a, a pincer movement, really, to those who are, are already in a state. Vicky, how high do you think interest rates could go? I know it's a really tough question, but many people are thinking about it, and people like us have to at least have a stab at... <laughs> well, I mean, the, the truth is, of course, that it's a global issue. Yeah. Uh, it's electricity prices, gas prices going up generally, staff shortages, which everyone has been experiencing, supply chain issues. So it's not, you know, just the UK, we've spent too much money trying to help the economy issue. It is that everyone's done that. So a lot will depend on what happens with, with Omicron, the variant, whether indeed we're going to be seeing a slowdown, particular... Yeah, yeah sectors such as travel and so on, where the demand therefore... And that would mean we wouldn't yeah. have more interest rate rises well, soon if Omicron really hammers the economy. We may not have as high inflation as been, has been forecast. That's right. And therefore, we may not need to raise interest rates anything right. like as much. But it is worth bearing in mind that throughout the whole of the period after the financial crisis, when, of course, we had our ups and downs and also inflation did go up, interest 2010, rates... 2010, 11, 12, yeah. yeah. To 2019... Yeah. The highest interest rate it's got to was 0.75% yeah. in the UK. Yeah. So in, in order... But that was what quantitative easing was going throughout that whole period, right? Of Which course. keeps interest rates artificially low. Well, we're still having that, of course, going on. Not, not perhaps from here on as high as before, but it's quite interesting because if you look at what the European Central Bank has just announced... Yeah which is a little bit like what the, 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 the Federal Reserve in the US has announced, is that they're reducing the quantitative easing quite significantly. They will have stopped buying more bonds in the market themselves, in the secondary market, by March, yeah. whereas originally it was going to be... That is under their pandemic purchase scheme. There is also an old one that they will carry on doing, possibly even increase it a bit. But what they're saying is we're still going to reinvest all the money that we get mm. from... Uh, basically, you know, uh, anything that matures that we own on our balance sheet, if you like, yeah. we will reinvest it and buy more more bonds anyway. So the support will still be there to keep long-term rates low. So, so, yes, of course, we worry about mortgages, but what you might find is that the underlying interest rate for mortgages may not be going up very much mm. at all. Just to unpack what you said, because we really are now at the limit of the sort of technical discussion that you find on television, right? And I'm proud of that. That's what On The Money is about. And it's great that we're venturing into these more technical waters. But let's take the viewers with us. What you're essentially saying, Vicky Price, is that as long as quantitative easing is around and there's the idea there could be a bit more of it, Indeed. then interest rates are likely not to go back to 4 5%, 10% where they were in our younger days when we bought our first homes, right? You're saying that they're going to stay, you know, 1%, 2%, only if quantitative easing stays on the scene. Yes, and in fact, the ECB has said today, the European yeah. Central Bank, that if necessary, they will do more. And that's the interesting thing, that although for the moment they think they need to draw back a little bit, yeah. they will continue to be involved in the market and intervene in the market, and they may, in fact, increase those purchases too, if necessary. The danger is, though, with quantitative easing, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a bit like, you know, sweets. Mm. They're all right in moderation, but if countries keep going, mm. ever printing more money, expanding the money supply, there will be inflation, currencies will collapse, mm. you will get financial chaos. But just go back to... Um, the pounds and pence in people's pockets, if you like. Let's go back to you, Nick Mendes. Jasmine Bertels there said about 2.2 million households are on variable mortgages in this country. There are about 27, 000, uh, 27 million UK households, so it's less than one in ten. It strikes me that there are far fewer people with mortgages uh, than there were 10, 15 years ago. More households now are in homes that are owned outright they're often much older people. Younger people are finding it difficult to buy homes, of course. But because there are fewer mortgage holders in the UK these days and fewer of them are on variable rates than they used to be, the Bank of England's ability to control spending through the mortgage market is now much less than it used to be. 
Absolutely. I think when, when we take into account habits as well, most people, if you look back over the last few years, more and more people are taking out fixed rates for stability. Yeah. So when you have interest rate rises, we don't see the same effect that it does in pounds of pence of what you see on a daily, but, you know, coming out on the mortgage payment each month. And when, when we take into account, as an example, the rate increase, what, what it actually means in pounds of pence for clients is that a typical tracker month through payment will, in fact, go up around by £10 a month. And a variable, if you're on your standard variable rate, this rate increase will typically increase your monthly payments by £10. So you're not going to see a huge, um, huge change, so to speak, when it comes to the outgoings. But what we are seeing is it's about trends and habits. And what is interesting is with the, when lenders are taking into account further borrowing, we're starting to see long-term fixed rates. And in a way, and it'll be interesting the demands that clients have to really counteract potential rate rises. I think everyone's focused on, is this the start and how high will it go over the next, over the course of the mortgage lifespan? That's exactly the money that on the money's posed. That's exactly the question that on the money's posing today. How high can they go? And I guess what you're saying there is that because there's a sense now that rates are going up and will keep going up, albeit quite slowly, given what Vicky Price said about quantitative easing, there will be a move now to long-term fixes that the mortgage industry, hopefully there'll be a bit of competition between those providers, so the long-term fixes remain good value. But interest rates are going up, Richard Lane. Uh, your charity, Step Change, does help people who get into financial difficulties. As interest rates go up, just tell us what's happened during the pandemic in terms of vulnerable households becoming indebted and getting into financial difficulties. I, mean, I think the first thing that's really important for us to point out is that this isn't a new problem. Actually, we've been seeing these trends for a decade where we're seeing uh, overwhelmingly our clients are under the age of 40. They don't own their own home. They don't have any financial security in terms of savings to fall back on. And we've just seen some of those trends accelerate over the pandemic. So in terms of what we see, it's people who are in unstable gig economy jobs who may not have been furloughed. They don't own their own home, so they can't access things like uh, mortgage payment holidays. And they are acutely financially vulnerable because they do have these unstable uh, incomes that means that they can't build up uh, a safety net. And throughout the pandemic, they've had to turn to borrowing, uh, often payday loans or very high cost ter terms of borrowing just to be able to make ends meet. And now they're facing potentially a perfect storm with some of that support that has kept them afloat, things like the £20 uplift on universal credit, start to come to an end at exactly the same time where they're seeing their household bills rise quite drastically uh, and interest rates rise, which are going to be able to put, it's going to start to push up uh, some of the borrowing that they might have. You know, overwhelmingly, the most common type of credit that our clients have is credit cards and store cards. How is that going to translate into those costs as people head into winter and they rely on that type of credit uh, to make ends meet uh, and put food on the table and heat their homes? Very interesting. Very Jasmine, interesting. open-ended Jas question to you. We're coming to the end of our uh, discussion mm. now. How high do you think interest rates might go? You've heard from Vicky. It really does depend. The big question, the elephant in the room, is quantitative yes. easing. It's exactly. hard to even say, let alone get your head around, <laughs> as we've discussed <laughs> yes. many times. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? What are you going to be telling people who subscribe to moneymagpie.com? Well, I, I, I agree with, um, with Vicky that I think interest rates will be kept down. I think quantitative easing will continue. And that means that we will... I agree with Mike, who wrote in. I think we will get to 8% at least. Inflation. In, inflation. You do. Yeah. Inflation is the thing that I'm focusing on because I think that that's... You know, we, we, the people, are going to pay the price um, for the government's machinations, frankly, not just our government um, and, of course, not just our bank, central bank. Um, they are just printing money like there's no tomorrow and we're the ones, I think, who are going to pay for it. Vicky, with all your experience as, a, as an econo economist in, in government, academia and so on, just paint a picture because quite a lot of our viewers are younger people. They won't remember the 70s and the 80s like you and I do. Sorry to be unchivalrous about that, but I was, in, I was there too. Uh, just tell us what happens when inflation gets to sort of 8 9 10%. What happens when there's a sense that the authorities, be it the Bank of England, the government, have stopped worrying about inflation or are more concerned about just spend, 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 rather than reining in price pressures? What happens? A lot of the confidence goes. There is no doubt about that. But, of course, if uh, people think that inflation is here to stay, they're going to be asking for a lot higher wages, yeah. and then it becomes ingrained to the system. Mm -hmm. And it then takes a lot of effort 
to get it out of the system. So, in other words, a lot of austerity may need to follow. To or... push out those inflation expectations, exactly. as we say. But I'm not... I mean, we're getting a little bit there because we've already seen demands for wages which are much higher than yeah. they've been for quite some time. Industrial we... action. Of Look course. at Tesco. Look I mean, at some of the public sector unions. I agree, but do remember that wages had fallen in yep, the previous that's year. that's true. And that if you're looking at where we are now, in terms of real wages, of course... But even if you look at the nominal wage increase that have taken place, we're only just going back to pre-pandemic levels. That's true. And also, we should say, shouldn't we, Jasmine, mm. that um, back in the 70s, uh, you know, almost 50% of the British workforce were in a trade union. They were very good at yeah. pushing through mm. ever-rising wages. Mm. Now it's less than mm. 25% largely in the public sector rather than the private sector. Yes, I mean, as, as Step Change has pointed out, the gig economy. And, oh, again, we have a sort of a two-speed economy. You've got, uh, and we've seen this particularly over the last couple of years, the rich have got richer, much, much richer. The poor have got poorer. Um, and so if you are in a gig economy um, job, certainly if you're working in, in hospitality or something like that, now is a very, very tough time. Mm. But a lot of people, you know, just in the next couple of weeks, they'll be staying at home, they'll be saving money. Indeed. Thank you to all our guests today. What a fantastic discussion. You heard from Vicky Price, Chief Economic Advisor at the Centre for Economic and Business Research, Jasmine Bertels, founder of moneymagpie.com. Thanks also to Richard Lane for joining me. He's the Director of External Affairs at the debt charity Step Change and Nick Mendes, Mortgage Technical Manager at the Mortgage Brokers John Charco. I just wanted to bring in some more of your emails. We've had so many on this subject. Don't let anyone tell you that the general public isn't interested in business and economics. They absolutely are. Emails flooding in. A lot of you feel really